Holly, thank you for the time. Great to see you, and I uh, can't wait to hear about uh, your travels up there and what you expect uh, to see and witness tomorrow night. It's going to be really exciting, and I'll tell you one thing. The Auburn fans have showed up. There were complete Auburn fans on my flight here, people coming from Los Angeles, New York, Washington, D.C. Um, the Auburn faithful have traveled really well up here, Paul, and I think they're really excited about this game. The team is going to land here about 4 o'clock any second now, and uh, people from Auburn are very fired up for this matchup. Yeah, I mean, these are so, it's so rare to, to get a game like this, Holly, and I know that that adds uh, to the eagerness and the anticipation, but uh, in terms of where you are, it's quiet right now, uh, 20, 27, 28 hours from now, that that is going to be a, a sight to behold. And I'm, I'm curious, uh, you know, what, what, you are, what you are going to anticipate and expect. I'm not sure if you, if you, you, you may have, maybe you've covered a wide, wide out before. I've seen them, and they, they just look unbelievable on television. Yeah, I think the whiteout is probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, spectacle in all of college football because it's, it's not just that they're wearing white or that, you know, the stadium is all unified. It's loud. It is so loud here. It's over 106,000 people, and they're cheering in unison. They've got the pom-poms going in unison. It's organized. It just feels so special, and it's definitely one of those bucket list opportunities for people. But I will tell you this. Auburn has been preparing for the noise. I went to practice at Auburn on Wednesday afternoon, and it was deafening, Paul. They had the, the music cranked up. They had crowd noise and music going simultaneously. It got up to 120 decibels at practice in Auburn on Wednesday. And so they're ready for the noise. They practice having to communicate with each other. Bo Nix feels very confident that he can communicate well. And so I, I can't wait to see how they respond to this great atmosphere. But it's one of the greatest scenes in all of sports. And James Franklin said something interesting today. He said, you know, one of the reasons we schedule this game is people from the SEC, they can come up here and, and they'll go home and be like, man, that was something really special. You know, they're going to understand that the Big Ten plays some great football and has some great audiences and fans as well. Holly, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what else you learned other than not being able to hear at the Auburn practice. What's your takeaway from what you picked up on your trip down there? Well, I, I got a chance to spend a lot of time with Bo Nix. He and I got to visit for quite some time. And and this is a calmer, more mature. This, this young man has been through a lot. He's on his fourth offensive system, his fourth offensive coordinator. You think about how Bo Nix at Auburn has been thrown into the fire. Um, you know, they had an offensive line that really struggled at times under his young career, and he was running for his life. And I just see a more calm, cool, and collected Bo Nix. Can he, can he maintain that demeanor during the game? And, you know, we talked about it, Paul. There's this big narrative that, oh, yeah, he's really great at home, but he hasn't played well on the road. And, and we actually talked about that. And he said, well, I, I understand that, that that's out there, but think about the road games I've played in. I mean, I'm playing in Death Valley against LSU, and they're the number one team in the country. I'm playing Alabama. They're the number two team in the country. You know, the places he's played on the road have a little something to do with that and why he's struggled because it's been some of the most difficult teams that they've had to match up against. So I, I'm curious to see how Bo Nix has matured and how he comes out here on Saturday. Holly, let's talk about the other side because, you know, we, we, we saw Penn State at Wisconsin, and it was a tough game to watch unless you're an old-fashioned defensive stalwart. But a lot of people inside our beltway are, are dubious of Penn State's ability to, to put points on the board. What, what do you hear from the coaches and, and your own view of, of, of what Penn State has right now? Well, what Penn State has is defense, and even though that's not sexy and smart, uh, Sean Clifford, their quarterback for Penn State, told us a really cool story. He said, we go into the locker room at halftime at Wisconsin, and it's zero to zero, and the defense is playing there, you know what's off, and he's like, they're telling us, like, keep going, we've got you, we've got you, and that defense gave the offense some time to try to figure things out. So I, I think what Penn State has is they can rely on their defense. They have terrific special teams. But right now, James Franklin said the thing that they're doing on offense is they're not turning the ball over, they're creating turnovers, and then they're limiting explosive plays while creating some explosive plays of their own. 
So Jahan Dotson, if you haven't heard his name, you guys, he is a really fast, dynamic player. This is an NFL type of talent, and he ran a 4-3-40 this spring. He, he's going to be a really good downfield threat for the Penn State Nittany Lions. And listen, they haven't got it rolling quite yet, but I'll be curious to see if they can't put some pieces together because they do have some explosive playmakers. Holly, finally, uh, you, you talked about the, the noise and, and the atmosphere, and it, it is deafening in a place like this, and nobody can hear anyone else. You're, you know where I'm going. You're on the sidelines. You have to be in, commu in, in communication with the, the, the group in the, in, in the booth and your producers and directors. How do you hear? Yeah, it's a challenge. I've been here before where it's so loud, Paul. Like, you feel the noise in the bones of your chest, like in your sternum. You're like, my bones are vibrating. It's that loud right now. So um, I wear these double earpieces like this so that it can help block out some of the crowd noise. It is a challenge. I mean, there are times that you, you don't know what's going on. You can't communicate. But um, listen, I've been in stadiums that get loud and get crazy. It's just how many people are here and how orchestrated this crowd is. I think it's going to be a dynamic electric atmosphere. And I think that both teams, um, they are really good. 2-0, and both teams, young quarterbacks who've been through a lot. Sean Clifford's been through four offensive coordinators. Bo Nix, he's been through four offensive coordinators. Both of these young men with a lot to prove, and that's going to be kind of the, the tail of the game in my mind. Who plays mistake-free quarterback position? Who doesn't turn the ball over? And then who can create on some explosive plays downfield? Holly Rowe, live in State College, Pennsylvania. What a what an atmosphere and, and what a broadcast that will be tomorrow night on ABC. Many, many thanks, Holly. We'll be watching. My pleasure. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.